This is lecture 26 in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about loss budgets. A loss budget is a very important specification for a fiber optic link. It determines the maximum loss the link can tolerate for transmission. That loss is determined by the output of the transmitter and the required power at the receiver, although it may be lower because of fiber bandwidth effects on high-speed multi-mode or long single-mode links. The loss budget is established by the manufacturer of the transceiver, and the cable plant loss that you operate the link over must be less than that link loss budget. Loss budgets are also often calculated to provide an estimate of cable plant loss for comparison to actual test results to make a go, no go decision. A fiber optic link uses an LED or laser transmitter to convert an electrical signal to optical and couple that into an optical fiber. The optical fiber transmits the signal to the receiver. Along the way, the optical fiber attenuates the signal and any connector or splice in the link will add loss. So the power at the receiver is determined by how much power you put in with a transmitter and how much is lost in the cable plant. So what we're interested in in this link is the amount of power at the transmitter and the amount of power at the receiver. When we're measuring transmitter or receiver power, we use an optical power meter calibrated to the proper wavelength. We'll measure the power from a transmitter by attaching a reference cable or a patch cord and measuring the output of that short cable. At the receiver, we'll merely unplug the receiver cable, plug it into our power meter, and make a measurement. We usually make this measurement in dBm, dB reference to a milliwatt, and we compare it to system specifications. The performance of a fiber optic link is defined by this graph. The vertical scale is bit error rate, which is the inverse of signal to noise. The horizontal scale is receiver optical power. And the red line shows that as the receiver optical power gets higher, the bit error rate goes down, that is, the signal to noise improves and the quality of the signal improves. And that will continue until such a point that the receiver optical power gets so high that it starts saturating the receiver and the curve, that red line, starts turning up again very quickly to high bit error rate. The green square actually marks the operating range of the link. At the top, we have the maximum bit error rate. The maximum bit error rate that can be tolerated in that link. And it's usually one bit per billion or thereabouts. The left-hand side of the green square is the minimum optical power that provides an adequate bit error rate for the link. And as the power increases, as you can see, the red line is going down, so the bit error rate is decreasing and the link performance is getting better. The maximum power on the right-hand side of the green square is the maximum amount of power the receiver can tolerate before it begins getting overloaded or saturated. And the equation on the left shows what determines the receiver power. The transmitter output less the cable plant loss is what gives us the receiver power and determines how the link works. By looking at the diagram of how the system works and what causes loss in the system, and the diagram of bit error rate versus received optical power, we can determine then that the transmitter output less the receiver power gives us the loss budget, the amount of loss that can be tolerated in the link. 
if we look at a block diagram of a system and think about the fact that the light from the transmitter is attenuated as it goes to the receiver, we can understand it better by looking at the graph below it, where we actually have on the, on the vertical axis the power starting at the transmitter output at the top and going down to the receiver sensitivity on the bottom as a function of distance from the transmitter. So the transmitter output is attenuated as it goes through connectors or splices and it goes through lengths of fiber. So what we're seeing here is the actual operating system at work. On the right hand side you can see link loss. That's the actual loss from the transmitter output to the receiver input. And the additional margin there is how much excess power there is beyond the required receiver power. Calculating the loss budget is straightforward. We add up all the causes of loss in the cable plant. The length of optical fiber times its attenuation coefficient in dB per kilometer, the number of connectors, including the ones on each end of the cable plant, times the average loss of a connector, and the number of splices times the average loss of the splice. Now some people question whether you should include the connectors on either end of the cable plant. Some people say they don't have any loss because one is plugged into a transmitter and the other is plugged into a receiver and they're not connected to cables. But the definition of the loss of the cable plant includes those connectors because very often we're measuring the loss of a permanently installed cable plant that will be connected to transmitters and receivers by patch cords. Here's a table of maximum losses from TIA 568 standard and typical component losses. Standards like TIA 568 tend to have higher losses than what we think of as typical because they're written by manufacturers who want to make sure that they consider the worst case losses in their standards. And when you're doing a loss budget, you have a choice of whether you use a standard loss or a typical component loss. And we'll calculate a loss budget and look at the difference. This is the loss budget for an example, a two kilometer multi-mode link with five connectors and one splice. Using TIA specifications, it calculates out at about 11 dB at 850 nanometers and 7 dB at 1300 nanometers. If we recalculate the loss with typical component specs, we'll find that the loss of the link goes down to about 7.7 .7 dB at 850 nanometers or 3.7 dB at 1300 nanometers. When you compare TIA worst case specifications and typical specifications on a link like this, you'll see the difference is quite large, over 3 dB at both 850 and 1300 nanometers. Which component spec should you choose? We generally suggest that you use your judgment. The TIA specs are definitely worst case. For example, not too many connectors are accepted at 3 quarters of dB of loss. But even if you're using pre-polished splice connectors these days, it's easy to do connectors at a half a dB or better. So we suggest you look at the components you're using and pick more typical values when you do your loss budget, especially when you're comparing them to the loss of the installed cable plant that you test. There's an easy way to calculate loss budgets. Just use the FOA free loss calc app for your smartphone. It has both TIA standard values, typical values, and those typical values can be changed by the user to be any value that they deem appropriate for the cable plant they're looking at. You simply put in the specifications for the components that you want 
input the fiber length, number of connections and splices, and it will calculate the loss budget automatically. And it will give you two numbers. One is the worst case numbers per TIA standards and the typical numbers that you input yourself. It makes it easy to compare. There's more information on lost budgets on the FOA online reference guide website. Go to www.thefoa.org and go to the online reference guide. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the professional society of fiber optics. Be sure to see all our other YouTube videos too.